It's the Christmas season and like everybody else, I'm looking for good Christmas cookie recipes. Just there's one thing this year I have to take into account for. Last year I bought way too much marzipan and that's just half the marzipan which I have left from last year. And the marzipan is supposed to expire or best buy next year March 2022. So I figured I need to find some recipes where I can use all my leftover marzipan. And I did Google and found a German recipe, which certainly is not gluten free. And as you know, I like to experiment and see, can I make a glutinous recipe gluten free? Nussecken, which is pretty much a shortbread with some nuts on the top of it. And let's see if I can make it gluten free. follow me know that I'm a little bit picky about my flour combination and gluten-free flours are a little bit different. The store-bought have a lot of variables in it, you don't really know what is in it. So I came up with my own flour combination and this is a shortbread recipe so I'm going to use my tart crust flour combination because tart crust is a shortbread. Now the shortbread recipes differ a little bit and what makes them really different is how much butter you put in them and maybe also how much sugar, but it's kind of the more butter, the flakier it is. So the butter is really a big component of how soft your shortbread or how flaky or how soft your brittle it is. This one is talking about 300 grams of flour and 180 grams of butter. So you have more than half of it being butter. That should be very nice and tasty. So I'm going to measure 300 grams of my pre-max tart flour combination. And that recipe is on my website. So that's 300 grams of tart flour combination. I'm going to add 85 grams of powdered sugar. That's a little bit unusual. Normally a recipe asks for regular sugar, but apparently I need to use powdered sugar for this one. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking powder. Now this one asks for a Weinsteiner baking powder, which is, I guess, a region in Germany. I'm not quite sure why, but I'm going to just use regular baking powder. I'm going to use a pinch of salt and luckily I have this time my salt container ready. One egg and 180 grams of cold butter. And I also asked for two tablespoons of ice cold water. Now I'm going to combine it first and see if I need some extra water or if the dough is already fine as it is. It's always a little bit questionable how much water and oil you need. So I'm going to put now the dough on my table. Mürbeteig is just easier to combine on the table. And I have this small little nifty tool, which you can use to break down the butter a bit more. And how you can see the dough does need a little bit more water. And normally I put it in a little bit of a hole of the dough, so you can get it better absorbed. It was a little bit too wet, so I'm going to put a little bit more of my tart flour combination on my working area. And I'm going to knead now the dough one more time with the floured surface just to make sure some flour gets into the dough and dries it up a teeny little bit. And the recipe says to let it rest now for two hours. I'm not going to go quite sure if I really need it. Normally it's just to solidify and harden the butter again. So we'll see if I'm going to do it because I do have some other plans for today and I may want to have my cookies ready before that. What I do have to do is though prep now the filling for this cookie. For the filling or the topping of this cookie, I need 200 grams of chopped hazelnuts. So, and since I couldn't buy them pre-chopped, I'm just going to quick chop them. I also need 200 grams of ground almonds and again, I forgot to buy them ground. So I'm going to grind my almonds with my hazelnut. So I want them chopped, but not completely ground. So that looks pretty good to me. 
And I want to add now 200 grams of marzipan. I still have a lot of marzipan left. What am I going to do with that? I still have just three more months to get rid of it. So, and the recipe said I need to put that now to the nuts and chop that. Now, I never tried that before, so that's going to be all very interesting. You can also do that all by hand, but that seems like a lot of work. So let's feel out if the marzipan got chopped up. And I think it did. Uh, I'm just going to pulse it two or three more times, just for good measures. So here are my finished ground nuts or chopped nuts, in addition to the chopped nuts. So I have to melt 120 grams of butter. So now I want to pour the butter into a smaller bowl, add 200 grams of sugar. I'm going to mix now the butter and the sugar with a whisk. And I'm supposed to add four drops of almond extract. I really don't know how many four drops of almond extracts are. I'm going to use an eighth of a teaspoon instead. And honestly, if I wouldn't have it, I just would omit it. It just brings out the almond flavor more. And I'm going to pour now the butter, the sugar and the almond extract to that mixture. At least that's what the recipe tells me to do. And I'm going to combine that. So I'm going to take now one of my cake pans and I want to line it with some parchment paper so I can just lift the cookies out of the sheet later. But I didn't measure my parchment paper so I'm going to eyeball this. Now the parchment paper does fit now in the pan after multiple tries but hey it works. And now I have to roll out the dough so it fits into the pan. So I'm going to press the, the remaining dough into the form. And I'm going to have to pre-bake the dough for 10 minutes before I'm going to add the filling. And I'm going to stab the dough now with the fork so the hot air can escape. And I'm going to put the shortbread now into the oven for about 15 minutes at 325 degrees to pre-bake the shortbread. And I forgot something very important. I forgot to add the heavy cream to the nuts and the marzipan. Oops. So I need to measure 100 milliliters. Here we go. And I'm going to add that to the filling now. So here's my pre-baked shortbread. And I'm going to add now the filling. I'm going to try to spread it as evenly as possible. And I'm going to put it back into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. I think it will be thicker than I wanted it to be. But my baking form is a little bit smaller than recommended in the recipe. Here are my finished Nussetten, and I did let the tray cool down overnight. The recipe also talks about drizzling chocolate over it, and drizzling chocolate over cookies sounds always good. So I will have to melt some chocolate for that, and I'm going to add some butter to it, just to make it easier to drizzle it over the cookies. To melt my chocolate, I'm going to first heat up some water to create a steam bath. It's really cold here. So I'm going to warm my hands with the steam as well. <laughs> I don't know if you can start to see the steam coming up. Well, I'm going to put now my metal bowl with my chocolate on the top of it. And the steam will heat up the metal bowl and then melt my chocolate. And I added about 80 grams of dark chocolate. And you can see how the steam is now melting the chocolate. But as you can see, it's very thick and it's barely drizzles. So what I have to do now is add butter. And you use normally a quarter of the weight of the chocolate to butter. So I used 80 grams of chocolate. So I need now 20 grams of butter. And you can see how much thinner the chocolate is becoming now. So the butter is completely melted. Now. And you can see now how it drips. And that's kind of what I was looking for. So I'm going to take the chocolate off the heat now. And going back to my Nussecken, release it out of the tray before I drizzle chocolate all over it. And I'm going to use one of my cake spatulas and then I'm going to lift it out of the tray onto the cutting board. I found it easier to create drizzles with a spoon. So I'm going to take a little bit of the chocolate, put it in a spoon and drizzle with my spoon over the Nussecken. And if I got something a little bit too thick, I just normally use the spoon and distribute it a little bit more. So here are my finished Nussecken. So I'm going to cut now my Nussecken into squares. So first I'm going to cut them into stripes and check it out how it looks like inside. 
it's a very solid cake and I cut it into three and then I'm gonna have my square to create some triangles. Here are my finished Nuss Apple. And since I haven't tried this recipe before, I'm gonna taste it and see how it tastes. It's a little bit too sweet for me. I'm not a super sweet tooth. It will be very tasty though with a cup of tea or with, co uh, with a coffee. Or in the evening with some whiskey. I think ultimately what it's missing is some whiskey. I actually would add some whiskey to it. Or a dark rum. Dark rum might be good too. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.